All right, guys, welcome to the introduction for Apology of Physical Science. Before we get going, let me just tell you a little bit about who I am so you know what you're getting yourselves into with a class with me. Um, if you've already watched some of my other videos, you can probably fast forward through this because it's probably about the same thing, although I might, who knows what I'll end up actually saying. So my undergraduate degree is from University of Wisconsin Stout in early childhood education with an emphasis on special education. My master's degree is from Johns Hopkins in school administration and reading instruction. Now the story about how I became an extend tutor is a little interesting. I used to teach for the public school system, um, but then decided to homeschool my own children. So I spent a few years working for the school system while homeschooling my own children, which was a little bit of a conflict, um, it was a little difficult balance there. So eventually I ended up resigning from my school position, homeschooling my own, and then Bridge came about. And it was a glorious opportunity for me to continue teaching in the classroom setting while also homeschooling my own children. So I have been with Bridge, now Extend, since they started a few years ago. Um, I enjoy traveling. I enjoy reading. I enjoy the beach. The kids will tell you, anybody that's had me in the past will tell me I hate the winter. I do not like being cold. And they'll spend the entire winter talking about how the beach is calling me. It's just who I am. So when you're entering a homeschool tutorial, you're entering in a partnership with your tutor in that we will provide the homeschool instruction on Tuesdays and Thursdays, along with assignment sheets for you to work with, with your children on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That means that you are ultimately the homeschool teacher for your child and the one responsible for reporting to the state that you've completed the work. It also means that come Monday, Wednesday, Friday, particularly, us tutors are, are not the ones present doing the work. That's you guys are doing that. Most of us tutors try to live by the philosophy of God, first family, second, and career third. And that does mean that come Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we are focusing on our children and our, our own families because I do have two daughters that I'm also working with homeschooling and checking to make sure they're doing their assignments. Getting those things done is important for me on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, as well as preparing to teach on Tuesday, Thursday. So know that if you're um, looking for a private tutor that's going to work with your child one-on-one, -on -one, that is not what a tutorial is going to provide for you. You are still going to need to work with your child. You're still going to need to follow up with them, make sure they're completing the assignments. And yes, by middle school level, they're becoming more independent on things, but they still need a certain amount of handholding. So keep that in mind, please. With communication, um, I work hard to respond to emails and requests within a 24 hour period, but that does not include weekends. I do not look at my email for bridge, extend come next year on Saturday and Sunday. So if you're one of those families that likes to flex your schooling, just keep that in mind that this tutor is not at your beck and call and answering emails 24 seven. I will work on those emails during the week and get to them within a 24 hour period. And please, if I don't respond within 24 hours, send me a reminder because it could be I clicked on it, I read it and I was gonna respond, but I got distracted by something and then I forgot to come back and do it. So if I don't respond within 24 hours, it is perfectly acceptable for you to please respond to me and say, hey, you know, I sent this, did you see it? Because I'll probably respond saying, I'm so sorry, the buzzer was going off on the oven and I ran out to fix that and forgot, okay? It happens, we all, this is the life we're living. But just keep in mind that homeschool partnership, especially if you are new to tutorials, do some research on that before you sign up for classes. It is definitely a learning curve. Now, our required materials. I am going to be using the Apology of Physical Science with eighth grade this year. You do need the textbook and the student notebooking journal. Okay, I want the student notebooking journal because it will be a way for us to organize our students' work in one place because if your students are anything like mine if it's not in one place it's lost okay so the text does a fabulous job of organizing notes for them so that it will help them study and review the concepts as the text 
presents it so that notebook and journal partners very nicely with the text. Now the question I know I'm going to get is why the third edition? I already have the second edition at home because my older child already used this one. So did mine. I get it. But I will tell you from having an older child go through the second edition of this physical science book, it was a battle because they don't want to read it. You open that text and it was black and white words top to bottom of the page. It looked like a college textbook. And yes, this is a ninth grade textbook. We're using it in eighth grade. So your students will get their ninth grade credit, big bonus on this. They'll get a ninth grade credit for their physical science, but they are still middle schoolers. They're still teenagers. They are not ready to tackle a college looking textbook, nor do they want to. So I have been resistant to using the Apologia text in my classes for a few years now for that main reason. I want student engagement and I want something that they're going to be interested in when they open it. I'm thrilled to say the third edition text has taken that approach. There are lots of graphics. There is data represented in colorful tables. Um, the text has been split up through the page so that it's not a solid page of text. It's not, it doesn't look overwhelming. I'm telling you before, when you'd open that text, the kids would look at it and go, I ain't doing it. And then they close the text. I don't want that. I want our kids to open that text and go, oh, what is this? Oh, I want to learn about aptitude and frequency and period, because this looks kind of cool. Look at that chart. What's it telling me? I want them to be inquisitive. But if it's not visually pleasing to their eye, they're going to turn out to turn off to it the second they open that book. So yes, I know people still already have that second edition at home, but you're gonna be pleased with this third edition when you get it, okay? You know, hopefully you'll be pleased that you won't be arguing with your children to get them to do the assignments as much because they're gonna be more engaged with the text. Apologia is having a sale right now. I did notice that the other day when I was looking at their website. So it might be um, good to go ahead and look at purchasing it now or keep watching the Facebook marketplaces because people have used this text for the last year or so. So there will be some popping up used. Now, what is covered in the text? I put my Snoopy in there because hold on you guys, there is a ton in this text. It is a solid ninth grade curriculum. It's great. Yes, ninth grade, but we're using it eighth grade. Okay, we're good. They got it. They'll handle it wonderfully. The layout of the Apologia does line up nicely with the, the schedule for Extend because there are 14 modules and we have 28 weeks of instruction for Extend's calendar, which means we will spend about two weeks on each topic. And I say about because there are a few modules that we can do shorter, that we can get done in a week, week and a half. And then there's a couple that I already look at and say, we're gonna need a little spend, spend a little bit more time with this. So we'll need to spend two and a half to three weeks on a couple of them. So just know we'll be ranging, trying for two weeks, but we might do a little changes in that. We will finish the book through the year though. Okay, so topics, we start with the very basics. We are just, the first chapter is just learning how to measure and complete a um, scientific experiment. Um, then we go into properties and states of matter. That one I know, chapter two, module two, we'll be able to go a little bit shorter because they have a solid background of this by middle school already. Then we end up going into the atomic structure and the Bohr's model and the periodic table chemical bonds. Chapter five, we end up getting more into chemical reactions. We'll be covering ionic bonds, molecular compounds, single and double displacement. Awesome, right? Then we head into physics and we'll be getting into speed and velocity, gravity, friction, acceleration, all of Newton's laws, kinetic and potential, gravitational potential energy, sound, electricity, and chemical energy. A ton in physics. Um, then we end up getting into light with reflection, refraction. We get towards the end of the year, we do a little bit of earth science where we'll cover st the structure of the earth, rocks, minerals, different features of the earth. We'll do energy in the atmosphere and pressure and then we'll bring it all together at the end of the year with the carbon cycle, photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So that was a lot of stuff, right? 
it's going to be awesome. So my science classes, if you haven't had me in the past, we do a lot of hands-on. I am a very active and engaging student teacher for the students. You can expect on Monday, Wednesday, Friday that you're going to be needing to do a lot of textbook reading and get that done with the children so that when they come into class, they're ready with the background knowledge to complete the hands-on labs. We'll do some notes in class and review the skills, but for the most part we're doing hands-on act activities. And that goes for whether we end up being virtual or in person. We don't know what COVID's going to bring. And we're gonna be flexible. We're gonna do the best we can for our students, whether it be virtual or in person. This year being virtual, if you've been with me in the past, you know that we'll do, we did the quarterly pickup of materials so that every Tuesday they were having a hands-on lab and activity. Um, that got to be, a, it, it, it is trickier. I'm not gonna lie, it is so much trickier than just bringing my, my cart into class and doing the activities with the kids but I want the kids doing hands-on activities. So if we end up being virtual, I'll do the same thing. We'll do, be doing kit pickups every quarter so that you can have hands-on activities for them to do at home. If we're in person, you just send the babies in and we'll be doing some hands-on activities and games and activities and labs and getting messy and having fun, okay? Um, I want you to keep in mind with the schedule here, do it in order. And that's going to be related to whether we're virtual or in person, because some of these topics just won't work well if we're virtual, because the amount of money it would cost me to buy supplies to send home individual kits for everybody, especially I'm looking at electricity, magnetism, the lights, the waves, the sound waves, even the motion, those topics are gonna to be a lot harder to do virtual because the amount of supplies that you're gonna need, is gonna get costly. So I'm not going to tell or issue the materials fee until we know if we're gonna be virtual or in person. And then there might be some shuffling of topics in the weeks, which is fine because they're individual, we can do that. If it looks like we're gonna be virtual for the first part, I'll start the beginning just fine. But when we get into the physics, I might shuffle that down and move the earth science earlier in the year so that if we then end up being in person later in the year, then we'll be able to do the physics in person. It's a shuffle on my end. We'll make it work just fine. If COVID hasn't taught us anything else, it's to be flexible and appreciative of what we have. So we'll make it work, okay? Um, when the announcement is made, whether we will be in person or virtual is when I will let you know what to the supply material fee will be, but you can expect it to be around 40 or $50. I try to keep it reasonable. I will not throw out there a $100 material fee on you. Not happening. If it means I need to change our activities, make them a little simpler, or ask you guys, hey, do you have any toy cars at home you can use so I don't have to buy an individual car for every single student, then I might be doing some of that sort of thing. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Material fee, roughly 40, 50, maybe 60. I would hope not. I think not. I, I even myself cringe at doing that. So typical material fee is 40, $50 and I will try to budget the activities to fit in that. But expect hands on activities. That's what I do. I'm not a lecturer. This is the longest I talk doing these videos <laughs> for you guys. So they will be active and hopefully they will learn more by being active because what they do is what they tend to remember more. All right, so you guys, thank you so much for checking in today to see what our class will be about. Hope to see your kids in class.